Today I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the TL494 pulse width modulation chip including all of its features, what each of its pins do and how to connect them up. This chip is designed to control the output voltage of a power supply which it does so by controlling its output pulse width. The chip works from 7 to 40 volts but I usually supply it with 12 volts and some capacitors to stabilize the input voltage. Now the TL494 has an internal oscillator which generates the pulses you need for your power devices. We can control the frequency of this oscillator by connecting a capacitor and resistor to pins 5 and 6. The values of the capacitor and resistor will determine the frequency of the oscillator according to these equations. Single ended applications refers to converters where there's usually only one switch like a book or boost converter and push pull applications refers to where there are two or more switches and they are out of phase like the half bridge or full bridge converters. Now in most commercial power supplies the oscillator frequency is fixed. However if you want to be able to change the frequency yourself you can simply add some variable resistors. Here I show two values one for a coarse and one for fine adjustments. Pins 8 to 11 are where we take the output pulses from to drive our MOSFETs with. The TL494 chip has inside it two transistors connected to these pins. These transistors are uncommitted which means that you can connect them like this to get a falling edge output pulse or you can connect them like this to get a rising edge output pulse. Pin 13 is called the output control pin. If we connect this pin to the ground then the two output pulses from our transistors will be in phase and we would use this configuration for applications with only one switch. However if we connect pin 13 to pin 14 then the output pulses from our true transistors will be out of phase and this configuration we would use for applications like the push pull or half bridge where the switches are out of phase. Pin 14 is called the reference pin. It outputs a stable 5 volt reference source which we will use later on. Pin 4 is called DTC which stands for dead time control. Dead time is the amount of time between two successive pulses where the chip is not doing anything. This is an inbuilt safety feature which doesn't allow two switches in a push pull or half bridge for example to switch on at the same time and therefore prevents a short circuit. The dead time control pin allows us to change the minimum dead time by applying a voltage to it. If we apply 0 volts then our minimum dead time will be 3%. However if we apply 3.3 volts to this pin then the dead time will be 100% meaning the output pulses will be completely switched off. If you want to be able to control the pulse width manually then you can connect a variable resistor to pin 4 as I've shown here. However it's worth bearing in mind that inside the chip there is a sensitive comparator connected to pin 4. That means we want our voltage at pin 4 to be quite stable. So we connect the top of our potential divider circuit to a stable voltage which we have already at pin 14, the 5 volt reference pin. Once we know that we have 5 volts here we can calculate the value of these two resistors so that we have 0 to 3.3 volts at pin 4 allowing us to manually control the pulse width. Now the dead time control pin can also be used for an important feature called soft start. Soft start is a safety feature which causes the output pulse width and therefore the output voltage to increase slowly when you first turn on the chip. This is done because when a power converter first switches on it senses the output voltage as being zero and switches on hard in order to compensate that. This can cause large inrush currents or overshoot at the output voltage and the soft start feature is there simply to prevent that. To implement soft start you can use the circuit I've shown here. The two resistors form a potential divider circuit which applies a particular voltage to pin 4. The way this works is that when the chip is initially switched on the timing capacitor CT is empty which forces the voltage on pin 4 to be high and that forces the output pulses to be small. The timing capacitor then slowly charges through the resistor R1 making the voltage at pin 4 go to zero and as it does so the output pulse width increases. The time which the soft start lasts for, T, depends on the product of the values of the timing capacitor and the R1 resistor. The data sheet arbitrarily chooses R1 to be 1 kilo ohms and then states that you should choose R2 to be 10 times that, so 10 kilo ohms. The TL494 contains two internal error amplifiers which are usually used to control the output voltage and also for overcurrent protection. 
To control the output voltage, we connect a potential divider to it so that the value of our two resistors gives us 2.5 volts. Then we feed that 2.5 volts into the positive pin of the error amplifier. Now we need another 2.5 volts to compare it to, which we get by connecting two identical resistors to the 5 volt reference pin like this. Now when the output voltage goes too high, the voltage at the positive pin will increase above the negative pin voltage and the error amplifier will switch off the output pulses. If the output voltage is too low, the opposite will happen and this is how the chip maintains a stable voltage at the output. To implement over current protection, we measure the total current at the output using a high power, low value resistor called a sense resistor RS. This resistor will develop a voltage across it proportional to the amount of current passing through it. So for example, if our maximum current is 10 amps and our sense resistor is 0.1 ohms, then we will have one volts across this resistor at the maximum current. Then we take that voltage and connect it to the positive pin of one of the error amplifiers. Now we need a stable voltage to compare it to, which again we obtain by connecting a potential divider to the 5 volt reference pin. We choose the value of these resistors such that they give us the voltage we're looking for, in this case 1 volt, and then we connect that to the negative pin of the error amplifier. This whole thing works similarly to before. If there's too much current at the output, then the voltage at the sense resistor will go above 1 volt and the error amplifier will switch off the output pulses. Please note however that according to the data sheet these error amplifiers only work with DC voltages and currents so they're not meant for pulse by pulse current limiting. I hope you liked this video, I hope it was useful to you. If you'd like to support the channel you can do so using the links below. Thanks a lot, see you later.